Welcome to the Texas Nerd House, y'all. Now, many people who stop by will spot this old Soviet Electronica DVK-3 computer and tell me, gee, I remember that computer. To which I reply back, no, you don't. I don't know what they think this computer is when they first see it, but it's got to be a one-of-a-kind thing here in the United States, and I'm going to tell y'all how it came to live with us. As I was contemplating my computer collection last summer, I was trying to think about what there could be that would really set my collection over the edge. What is the missing piece here? As it turns out, I've already got quite a collection of the heavy hitters from the 1980s and 90s. I've got Apples, Amigas, Ataris, Commodores, IBMs, Tandys, and Texas Instruments computers. But I don't want to collect anything so obscure that you can't really do anything terribly interesting with it. I, I like to collect things that have good sets of peripherals, good sets of games, and also can do more than just kind of starting up and playing basic. So when thinking about what else to get, I thought, okay, who's a big economic powerhouse in the 1980s as well? Certainly the United States, but also let's think about the United Kingdom, for instance. They make computers as well over there, such as the ZX Spectrum. However, there's already collectors here locally that have the ZX Spectrum as well. But when you think about some of their other machines, such as the Amstrad or the BBC Micro or the Acorn, well, as it turns out, those are not too hard to find in emulation. And so I could just run those through emulation as well and I have to own the real hardware. Well, then let's think about another economic powerhouse. Well, that would be Japan. And as it turns out, Japan has a pretty rich history of computing and a lot of really obscure machines as well that actually have really cool things because of all the games and development that has proliferated in Japan over there. But there's also collectors here locally who have those things in their collections as well, such as the NEC PC-88 and the MSX. So that leaves me with, okay, who's yet another economic powerhouse? Wow, okay, that would be the Soviet Union. Why is it that Westerners never hear about Soviet computers? The Soviets had several PDP-11 clones for various markets, such as the BK and UKNC for home and educational use, plus the DVK and the Electronica 60 which were used by programmers and researchers in academic and industrial settings. Besides these, they also have the Quorum series of ZX Spectrum clones, the Agat system inspired by the Apple II, various clones of 8080 and early x86 systems, and hobbyist kits such as the Radio 86RK. This didn't preclude other countries in Comicon from building their own computers, though. Bulgaria produced the Pravitz line of Apple II clones, or I guess to pronounce it correctly, Pravitz. 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 And in East Germany, Robotron produced a variety of computers based on Western chips like the Zilog Z80 and others. We might go more in depth on these systems in a future video, but for now you can watch the Retro Man Cave video, which goes into detail on a lot of these Russian clone PCs, especially the Specky clones. Okay, well that's all interesting information, but I didn't think I was actually going to seriously follow through with the plan. After all, there's so many things that could go wrong. For instance, an unscrupulous seller, or I get it all the way over here, heaven forbid it broke in the process, and yet I plug it in and I completely fry the thing. But soon after I hashed this plan, I actually found one of these Soviet computers come up on the Vintage Computer Federation forums, and I thought, well heck, might as well just see what this thing's all about and give it a try. And as it turns out, this computer is actually a PDP-11 architecture. Now a PDP-11 is definitely something that I don't have in my collection. It's not something that most people have either because it was never a microcomputer. Well, there's a few obscure microcomputers, but they came out after IBM had already released the PC and was already dominating the market so hard that these computers are pretty darn uncommon to find anyway. Not only that too, but I think of the PDP-11 as more of a mini computer architecture, meaning things that take up one or two whole server racks of space probably eat up a ton of electricity. And not only that, but it's gonna take me a long time to find a lot of pieces for it to make it a truly interesting system. However, 
This Russian computer had such an interesting type of design flair to it. It looked like something that came out of a totally different mindset than what you find in the West. The big, huge, black, bold bezel and the lines of it and the kind of geometric shapes. It seemed to me like they came more out of the 1970s, which is definitely the era of the PDP-11 having been big. So I thought for myself, you know what? Why not take a shot on this thing and try importing it to the United States? I usually like to troll these forums even more so than eBay or Craigslist or what have you in order to find stuff that enthusiasts really want to share with each other. But even then, Soviet stuff is not frequently discussed there, nor especially brought up for sale. So of course, this post piqued my interest and I emailed the original poster to get the dialogue started. And quite the dialogue it was. We exchanged emails for about two months while I was seeking various details and asking tons of questions, like... Does it work? How does it work? How much does it cost? What will it take to ship it here? What kind of power does it take? What kind of media will it come with? Does the hard drive work? How do I interface the hard drive? Does it have documentation? What do I do if it needs to be fixed? How can it be packed for such a long trip and not break? Which shipper will be the gentlest on it? And can we get shipping insurance? And after a two-week vacation, we went back at it over Facebook Messenger and email exchanges with the shipping company for a couple more weeks to continue discussing some final details, like shipping media for it. And with all the questions being answered, I had to make an executive decision. With all these answers revealing various levels of risk and uncertainty, I had to decide if it was worth it. Now the answers to all these questions can be found here at this link. And you can go and see for yourself if you would have asked anything differently or asked any additional questions before giving the decision to send or not send. But as for me, I was satisfied with the answers given, and I said, all right, send it. But then I didn't really know when to expect the package because SDEX stopped updating the tracking information after a while. I assumed it was held up in customs or something like that. But unbeknownst to me, UPS had taken it over and was making the detailed updates on their website. Thankfully, I'm signed up for UPS My Choice, so at least I got a day's notice that it was coming. Enough time to make preparations, but not lose too much sleep from all the excitement counting down the hours until arrival. Anyway, the crate took 12 days to make it from door to door. Well... We're through with all the wheeling and dealing and logistical discussions now, so let's fire up the beta to take a look back at last summer when the crate landed on my front porch. Hey gang, really excited to show you this monstrosity that UPS just dropped off on my front doorstep about 40 minutes ago. This Russian crate is an old Electronica DVK3 computer straight from Moscow, straight from the Soviet Union, straight from the 80s. Now this crate's about 150 pounds, so getting inside might be a little bit of a challenge considering the uh, steps that I gotta climb, but uh, <laughs> hopefully we can make it happen. All right, well UPS kind of left me in a bit of a pickle because, well, they're about 40 minutes early, which I guess is good. Everybody loves it when UPS comes early, but unfortunately, I wasn't really able to tell the delivery driver exactly how I wanted it brought upstairs. So, what we've got, since I've kind of had a little bit of experience at moving big things already, I happen to have a nice Harbor Freight hydraulic lift and this little dolly over there. Um, gee, I think I wonder which one I'm gonna use. Now getting this guy down the stairs is gonna be fun. All right, well, I made it down the stairs. My heart's pounding. Now I'm trying to figure out how to lift this box onto this big old hydraulic lift. Wish me luck. Well, since nobody's around, I'm gonna try to elevate this thing on some bricks. That way I can stack the bricks up underneath the package and get it onto this little lift without much trouble. Alrighty, two piles of bricks and still not quite there yet. Gotta add more. All right, third layer done. Maybe I finally got enough to take this uh, hydraulic lift a little bit at an angle and dive it right under the nose of this box. Well, it wasn't quite enough, so the fourth layer of bricks is coming right up. And hey, what do you know? Fourth brick is the charm. Boy, I should really build a loading dock for next time I try to do this. Now I'm dripping in sweat, but I finally have the computer on the lift. Now it's time to actually get across the stairs and up into the garage. 
So unfortunately, now that it's made it onto the stair steps, I realize this piece of yard is actually a pretty steep gradient. So I've built some tracks with these bricks and I'm hoping that I can roll the cart over the tracks and it'll stay fairly level. Well, that's a long way to tumble if it falls, so I decided to winch it up just a bit. Hopefully the winch will help stop any damage from happening if it goes crazy. Wish me luck. All right, here we go. This beast is finally in the house. I made it. My face is covered in sweat. I'm dripping. And now it's time to undo the final bits of tape on this box so we can crack it open and see what we've got. Now, let's see. I have a good spot to put this knife on me. All right, let's see. He's holding this thing up. Here we go. We got some more to take care of on this side. And then, maybe some additional stuff all on this side. Yeah, looks like it. Okay. Now, let's see how we go. All right, it's coming. Still a little bit locked on here, though. Oops. All right, we gotta dig a little deeper, I think. Yay, all right, let's see this thing. Okay, hey, look, it's a box within a box. All right, ooh, look at this. It's the Russian keyboard. Holy smokes, this thing still looks wonderful. I don't think it took any damage at all. Nice. All right, and the cords. Huh. Yep, this kind. What else do we have here? Some documentation it looks like, must be. Who knows? We'll have to open that up and find out more. Um, wow, this thing is like so smelly, man. It's like uh, musty or moldy or something. Yeah, so here we go. I gotta be careful with this thing and not drop it and not set it somewhere I'm gonna step on it like an idiot. All right, there's that. Look at that. <laughs> okay. Um, now, bear with me for just a second. I'm going to lift off the, uh, the styrofoam here and get to the good stuff. You know, the monitor is really the thing of interest. <sighs> Holy smokes, that's bigger than I expected. Jeez. <laughs> oh my gosh, the thing is beastly. I figured, well, I guess, you know, ultimately, I figured the screen might be just about like the same size as my hand. Um, let me try to swing this around so I can get in there. Yeah, there it is. Um, look at that. <laughs> Sweetness. Well, hopefully nothing on the inside got broken, but I imagine the outside looks really nice. So I don't think anything would have. Um, cool, yeah, I'm gonna, Put this on pause for a second. Get this down oh, a little bit more on the ground. Still on the pretty high lift cart. Because I really want this um, monitor to be treated with kid gloves when I take it out. Now up to this point, my wife doesn't know I've purchased this Russian computer. So stay tuned for our next video where you'll get to see both of us unbox it plus her initial reaction to the system. Somebody brought over a PDP-11 from the late 70s, and Russia was like, we can copy that, it'll take 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> this makes no sense. This has got to be the most cryptic looking sticker, <laughs> I think, ever. It could have something to do with, like, Soviet launch. <laughs> Of some sort, it's, uh, or alien abduction. <laughs> you won't want to miss her remarks and our first impressions of what we've gotten ourselves into. Bye, y'all.